country that it's better for the city to spend 60 million on millionaires. Mr. Edgerly, I know politically you donate to fiscal conservative programs. So I would, I would assume that you, you believe in fiscal policies. So let me, let me just ask. I'm, 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 I'm addressing Mr. Edgerly. I want to ask him, yeah. can you tell us how you can justify your political donations which, with asking for public funds? Yeah, look, I'd say my, my political contributions are across the board to people I believe in um, based on who they are individually. So I would, I would not want to take a political lens only on it. But look, I'll be up front, which is I've been involved in business for a long time. And I've been involved in businesses where to make the economic return make sense, we've had a, a public-private partnership that's been good. So we built a steel mill in, in Indiana. It now employs 6,000 people directly. It employs indirectly 25,000 people. The state of Indiana that contributed to that made probably six, seven, eight times its money over the 15-year period. And it was a startup, and trying to build a startup steel mill from scratch was something where you needed support. So look, I think this is great for St. Louis. I want to be up front. I, I, I think that we are going, I, I truly believe the numbers are, the numbers we've described, it's hard to forecast exactly, but close enough, the city will get more money back because it will get taxes on the ticket tax, it will get taxes on refreshments. 500,000 people will probably come into town to come see games and they'll create economic activity which creates revenues. So the use tax, which is tax on businesses but could be used for something else. And I, look, I agree with that point. I agree with that point. But the use tax will be more than offset. The more taxes will be created in these other taxes than we get. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. I truly believe that this is a kind of project that St. Louis really should have. And as far as, as far as the community, look, I believe in the community. If you've done your research to have a view on where I spend some of my uh, political dollars, we've given a tremendous amount of money uh, philanthropically to inner cities because we believe that is important. Uh, I think the difference for the community will be dramatic. I had this conversation uh, with, uh, with one of your cohorts uh, four or five months ago where I made the comment. To me, it's a little bit like it's a wonderful life, which is if you look back 20 years from now and you think about the world, if we don't do this versus we do do this, to me, at least personally, I truly believe it is honestly a no-brainer that St. Louis will be a better city. It will have more tax revenues. It will have more philanthropic benefits. And so, look, I understand the initial reaction people have, and people have a right to their view on anything, but I understand the initial reaction. But I truly believe this is one of those things that will be great for the community and is a fair and equitable benefit that is what's required to get someone to make the investment. So um, I, I hope that we can convince people of that. It's a hard thing to have you know, the detailed conversation on. But I want you to know personally, for me, you know, uh, if I was in St. Louis ignoring that I'm involved, I would vote yes to this. I think it makes all the difference in the world. Right. My question was, yeah. still is, now, how would you address a single poor mom in St. Louis who worries about her child's right. safety? Yeah. That this is good for her. That this, I, that, that spending $60 million on billionaires, millionaires, makes sense when they're struggling yeah. to survive. Uh, to, me, to me, the question is, you but, have but to... I know, I know what you think is the question. I want you to see if you can answer it I'm, from I'm, there. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I really am trying to. So for me, I think, I think the question gets to be, am I better off using the use tax to build this stadium and create the economic activity, which is like, it's an investment, it's not an expenditure. Uh, it creates the overall seed that will grow a lot of economic activity. And I would say, there'll be more money in the pot almost immediately by the time we have a team in 2020 if you spend it. And that the other activities that I think sports bring in a very positive way will also be a benefit. So it's a net net positive economically, and I think it'll be very much a net benefit for the community. The answer is you can do both. This is gonna generate more income than is being requested. It's, do you not understand that? I don't agree, but you're the one answering the question. Yes, I am. And it's gonna generate more revenue than is being requested, that's different than somebody donating money. Over the long term, there's $60 million put out. The projection is we will return 77 to $78 million 
on top plus another five million with the community benefits agreement that we have. So it's not it's not that 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 you use that money. We are actually returning. We are providing a return on the tax dollar that is provided. I'm not sure if that's confusing, but that's the way that this model is laid out. Well, and, and, and I agree that, that you view it that way, Jim. My question is, is there another place where this money can be spent? Where like the people who are opposed to this, they say that this should be spent sure. right now sure. on cool. developing our youth. Sure. If, if, if you could spend it on police and save one life. But let, me, let me just explain one thing. That the seventy-eight million dollars that we're talking, it won't be generated without the stadium and without the MLS team. It doesn't happen. Do you understand that? That the tax revenue that is generated from ticket sales and concessions, and all of the dollars that we're talking about, it, those dollars don't happen without the MLS team and the stadium. Mike. Yes. Hey guys. Hey Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been talking about finance. I have a few questions. Uh, the first is uh, on, on profitability of these teams. How many franchises um, are consistently turning a profit right now? So I saw something in an article or a column earlier today that the league is not profitable. Uh, the league is in investment mode. I think it's not that dissimilar to Jim's reaction to Jose's question. Uh, these things aren't uh, black and white. MLS could be profitable today if it reduced its expenditures and stopped the mode that we're in to invest to grow the league. And in fact, our owners have been investing more money in most cases, there are some profitable teams, uh, more money than they've been taking in because they believe that that is a good investment over time. So when I hear these um, comments about the league isn't profitable, it's just, um, Frankly, it's just, it's not based on a true understanding of how the sports business operates. We are in investment mode for the last 20 years. I believe we'll be in the investment mode for years to come until our national business is big enough to allow our owners to not have to invest as much money as they've been investing. And where do things stand with uh, the Miami franchise and is there any deadline on that? Well, you know, even in St. Louis, they ask about my Miami. So <laughs> what's a press conference without a Beckham question? You know, I'll, I'll answer it the way I answer all of them. It's in progress. Uh, we're working hard and in a very timely fashion to try to bring it to resolution. And that's really all I can say about it now. Well, we're, uh, we're at almost 3.30, so uh, 